So the release of Fallout 76 is actually upon us now. A good chunk of people got to play yesterday, but of course, if you bought the game digitally on consoles, it seems like you got the short end of the stick. But either way, in this video, what I want to do is actually just give you a couple of tips as to how to level up quickly. I feel like with Fallout 76 in particular, it's really nice to level up fast to actually be some of those higher levels. This game, more so than others, has a lot of level locked content coming in the form of, of course, weapons and armors, but even a couple of quests require a a certain level to get the rewards. And one of the really big ones is actually perk cards are locked behind certain levels so you won't get access to certain ones until you hit that level cutoff. So if you want an inside scoop, what I would say to do first and foremost is take a workshop. Workshops are a new feature in Fallout 76 and I think just not enough people really understand how powerful they are and aren't using them. Most of the time if you look around your server, you'll see most workshops on the map are empty and unclaimed. I would say one of the best workshops out there right now is the converted munitions factory, so I'll use that as my example. Basically, after walking up to this place, you're going to find a bunch of enemies there, you're going to have to clear them out, and then you'll get a reward of various caps and other items. You then have to spend a certain amount of caps to actually claim the workshop, but again, from that reward, the actual cost is often very small outside of whatever ammo you used. And from there, after claiming the workshop, you get a number of different things. One, a free fast travel point on the map, so you can come back here anytime you want at zero charge. You get a ton of free resources to build up a base and some defenses, and you're going to have to defend this place, so definitely plan accordingly. But then also the real powerful part of workshops, oftentimes there's some kind of resource production facility here. Around the outside of these workshops are oftentimes some kind of mine you can set up that'll give you resources over time. The munitions factory has an aluminium one, which that's a really rare resource. You'll find that as you play this game. So that just kind of gives it a little bump up to be even more powerful. And then the real selling point of a lot of these workshops, a lot of them have something unique to the workshop that does produce some kind of resource. The munitions factory, as the name suggests, gives you ammo over time. And this thing is going to get nerfed. I actually think it's glitched at the moment to give you too much ammo, more than it actually says it's going to. But you could pick the ammo type and then just passively after powering it, you'll get that ammo. For me, this led to getting hundreds of 556 five, rounds over time, which depending on what kind of weapon you're using can be immensely powerful. But now be warned, you are going to have to defend these workshops, which I think is also kind of the upside to them. You'll get waves of enemies of a certain kind, and a lot of times it's fairly easy to take these down. You hopefully set up a bunch of turrets and you'll kind of get the feel of where you should be placing them. For someone wanting to level up, having enemies run to you in waves and having a bunch of turrets set up to mow them down is pretty much one of the best ways you can level up quickly. But even beyond that, a new feature in Fallout 76, certain enemies will drop junk items on death. So for example, one time while defending my workshop, a bunch of anglers came. Anglers in this game drop adhesive in rates of 5 to 8. Needless to say, after the three waves of anglers, I think I walked away with 100 to 150 adhesive, which it's just as valuable in this game as Fallout 4. I think workshops are going to be one of those things that in the coming weeks are going to be way more contested, so I would get on it now, especially the munitions factory. There's typically very little upfront cost associated with getting it, and it provides you with a ton of loot and experience over time. So if I was you, I would start your playthrough, go claim one of the workshops, preferably the munitions factory, and then go start doing some quests. It might seem fairly obvious, but quests are actually a really good way to get resources and level up quickly, especially at some of the earlier levels. I would recommend following the Overseer for the first quest or two because it typically gives you a good jump start into the game. But then after that, if you really want to grind out levels, what I would do is focus on some of the higher level regions according to whatever level you are. Depending on if you're playing with one other person or not, I would probably try and give a 10 level advantage to the enemies to really get maximum experience without feeling too grindy. I'll give you a couple of good locations to really farm out enemies, but a couple of tips I just have overall. If you're really trying to level up, use power armor. Raider power armor, I believe, is unlocked at level 15 depending on the variant. And the thing about power armor in Fallout 76, once you know where it spawns, you could just kind of keep going there. It'll respawn after about 30 to 45 minutes, so you can farm it fairly easily. Put it on, waste those fusion cores, and just use it to hopefully take down enemies at a much higher rate along with all the extra ammo I got you from that munitions factory. I would always recommend going into some of the higher level zones with just one other person. The Fallout AI is really geared towards a single player game, so mostly they'll just kind of focus on one person. That gives the other person a ton of freedom with taking them down, and I've seen enemies literally run past other players to chase their target down. But even beyond that, if playing with another person, or really just in general, don't be afraid to die or let yourself die. This may sound kind of cheesy or get obnoxious, but if your goal is just to level up, 
and you are fighting some enemies that are much higher level to you, don't waste your stim packs or other rare items to try and stay alive, because death in this game has basically no consequence. You oftentimes can respawn for free at a local location or on one of your teammates, and then you're right back into the action. The only time this isn't true is when you're indoors, then I would try and stay alive. One location I would go to specifically if you're on the lower end of the levels is the big excavator. This doubles as a workshop, so you get all those benefits also, but even beyond that, basically what you're going to find here is a ton of mole men. They typically range from level 15 to 20 or so, and if you have a good ranged weapon, you'll probably be able to take them down fairly easily because almost all of them are using shotguns or minor claws. In other words, their range is horrendous, but they don't seem to always realize that and will still shoot you from far away doing next to no damage, and then you can very easily pick them off one after another. But also, thanks to the fact that they almost all are using shotguns, I got hundreds of rounds of shotgun ammo from clearing out this place and a bunch of levels in the process. And for me, what I think is the best place to level up is in Dire Chemical, that being in the mire. Enemies here are a little bit higher level at around level 30, but the Robo Brains here do next to no damage, have horrible range, and are just fairly easy to take down. They're kind of bullet spongy, but if you do have a ton of, let's say, shotgun ammo, you should be good. Killing like two Robo Brains or even like one and a half gives you almost the same amount of experience as killing a full-on Scorch Beast. When I originally found this area, I was in like the late teens of levels, and I think I gained three and a half levels just going through it once. But even beyond that, all of these robo brains drop fusion cores of various conditions. So you could use those for your own power armor or actually sell them to vendors. These guys give absurd amount of experience and I found just going through the mire in general, it's very easy to level up quickly. And then finally, while you're in this region, something else I would do is some of the quest for some of the larger factions. The Enclave quest in particular, which you actually start by going to this cave. Although be warned, there's going to be a couple of death claws in there. But even that, that's more resources, more black titanium. If you're just looking to farm a resource, this is where I would go. And outside of that, the Enclave quest in general gives you a ton of experience for completing the individual quest, but also there's not really much challenge. It's fairly simple to go from point A to point B. Once you have to become the general, that's a little bit more difficult, but at least the earlier parts are definitely smart and it's something I would highly recommend doing. But just overall, I would go through some of these higher level zones and try and do some of the quests that pop up on your pit boy, whether it be a main quest or a side quest. I went through the Cranberry Bog and the Mire at a fairly low level with just one other person and it wasn't super difficult. I think a lot of people get kind of scared once they see like a really high level enemy and they're like, oh no, I can't do that. But I would just give it a go. You probably can. So all in all, after like 45 hours now in this game, those are my recommendations for leveling up quickly. I would especially say farming some of these regions can get you to level 20 in all of like a day or two. And I'd say once you get to level 20 and then onto 30, things really start to open up as far as perk cards and what weapons you have access to. But yeah, that's where it's going to wrap it up for the Fallout part of this video. Hopefully you found this informative. Hopefully some of you guys will level up quickly. Hopefully you guys don't steal the munitions factory for me because I still take advantage of that location. But all in all, as you can probably tell throughout this video, I'm not a huge fan of the level lock that a lot of content in this game has. I kind of prefer the just openness of the old Fallout games. Fortunately, I think leveling up quickly is one way around this, and honestly, it doesn't really affect the story or many other aspects of the game. It's not like you can't do the quest, they might just be a bit easier. And PvP still has damage normalization, so it's not like you're getting a ton of benefits in that regard anyway. Before we end things off though, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day. So it's fairly obvious is that people brainstorming in a group come up with good ideas more often than just individuals brainstorming. Actually, no, that's that's not true. That's actually false. But yeah, as counterintuitive and maybe not obvious as it would be, research shows that people brainstorming in a group actually don't come up with more good ideas than people just brainstorming by themselves. Because assuming that you have the same number of people, like a group of five versus those five people just doing the work by themselves. So why is this? Why wouldn't the collective efforts of a group actually lead to better results? So one of the big things here is actually called production blocking. More or less this happens when you're in a group and maybe someone's saying their idea out loud and you're waiting to say your idea. During that time, you're either thinking about your idea and not thinking of new ideas, or you might actually forget your original idea while listening to somebody else. Even beyond that, there's a few that are a little bit more obvious, like free riding. The group's coming up with a bunch of good ideas, so there's less pressure on the individuals to think of things, or even evaluation apprehension. This is something a lot of us probably experience while talking in groups that you don't want to say something that sounds dumb 
dumb, while you're alone, you're probably way more likely to give that idea some thought. And even beyond that, in a group, you'll spend a lot more effort and time actually trying to justify that idea. Those do come together to make it so groups don't actually produce as many good ideas as those people just working alone. I found this one to be particularly interesting because I feel like it really is counterintuitive. Like, I don't think many people just assume that's the reality. But you'll find, and what I've kind of found while taking a social psych class, is that a lot of things with groupthink and how groups interact with each other is fairly maladaptive when those same issues aren't always there for an individual because, well, you probably know yourself pretty well. One pretty big one, if you guys have ever heard of the Challenger explosion, it's a big tragedy in the US. I think seven or eight astronauts died in that. Basically, at NASA, some of the lower level engineers were aware of some of the issues that eventually led to that problem. Unfortunately, they didn't really have a direct way to communicate with upper management and middle management, just getting pieces of information, didn't really view it as one big problem. In reality, if all the information and all the problems were available to upper management, the people making decisions, they probably wouldn't have launched the spaceship. But due to this maladaptive of communication structure, obviously things didn't go according to plan and ended quite tragically. With that all being said though, I thank you all for watching this again. Hopefully you found this video informative. I should have a lot more in the realm of Fallout 76 over the next couple of days. But with that, I hope to see you guys all next time. Later.